Welcome to my lecture online. Here we're going to use the inverse matrix method to solve the very same problem we solved before using the Kramer's rule and then using the augmented matrix method, the row echelon form and the reduced row echelon form. So we're using the very same three equations and now we're again going to solve for x, y, and z. The difference here is that instead of having the just the constants, negative 1, 1, and negative 7 on the augmented matrix, on the right side we actually have the identity matrix. And we're going to turn the left side into an identity, identity matrix with 1's across the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. And then this will become the inverse of the matrix. So here, this is what we call the A matrix, and this will become the inverse of the A matrix once we go through the operation. So, we do the exact same thing as we did before with the augmented matrix, but we want to turn this into the inverse matrix. So we want a 1 in the upper left corner, it's already a 1, then we want to turn these into zeros, that's already 0, so we only have to worry about this, turning that into a 0. We can do that by taking the third row and replacing it by the negative of this number, times the row with the 1 in it, and adding it to the third row. And of course we do that for every number in the third row. See what happens when we do that. Notice of course that the first row and the second row do not change. So we get a 1, a negative 1, and a 0. A 1, 0, 0. The second row is a 0, a 1, a 3. A 0, a 1, and a 0. But on the third row, negative 2 times this added to this gives me 0. Negative 2 times a negative 1 is a positive 2 added to 0 gives me 2. Negative 2 times 0 is still 0, so we keep a negative 1 there. Negative 2 times 1, that's negative 2, added to 0 is negative 2. Here, notice this becomes, stays 0, and this stays a 1 because negative 2 times 0, negative 2 times 0 doesn't change the thing. All right, I have the first column as 1, 0, 0. The next thing, I want to turn this into a 1. It already is a 1, so I don't have to do anything there. That means I want to turn this into a 0 and I want to turn this into 0. And I can do that by taking the first row, R1, and replacing it by the negative of that number, which is a positive 1, times the row with the 1 in it, which is R2, and adding it to R1. To get rid of this and turn it into a 0, I take the negative of that number, or with other words, I take row 3 and replace it by the negative of that number, negative 2, times the row with the 1 in it, which is R2, and adding it to R3. So that will get rid of this, and this, and turn those two into zeros. So what does that look like when I'm done? Now the row that doesn't change is a second row, so I get 0, 1, 3, 0, 1, 0. On the first column, I still get a, zero, a 1 and a 0 there. Not. 1 times R2, which is 1 added to that, gives me 0. 1 times 3 added to 0 gives me 3. 1 times 0 added to 1, I get me 1. 1 times 1 added to 0 gives me 1. And 1 times 0 added to 0 gives me 0. For the third row, negative 2 times this added to this gives me 0. Negative 2 times six, uh, 3 is a negative 6 added to negative 1 is negative 7. Negative 2 times 0 added to negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 added to 0, which is negative 2. And negative 2 times 0 added to 1 gives me a 1. All right, I'm in good shape now because the second column is 0, 1, 0. Now I need to turn this into a 1. I can do that by taking the third row and replacing it by negative 1 over 7 times the third row. But in other words, divide the whole row by negative 7. If I do that, I get the following result. Here, notice nothing changed on the first row, so I get 1, 0, 3, and 1, 1, 0. The second row is 0, 1, 3, and 0, 1, 0. The third row is 0, 0. This divided by negative 7 gives me 1. This divided by negative 7 gives me 2 over 7. This divided by negative 7 gives me 2 over 7. And this divided by negative 7 gives me negative 1 over 7. So unfortunately, we're ending up with fractions in the third column, but that's how it goes. We just deal with it. We have a 1 there now, so now I need to get rid of this, and I need to get rid of this. Those need to turn into zeros, and I can do that by taking the first row and replacing it by the negative of that number 
times a row with the 1 in it and adding it to row 1. Here we get to row 2, replace it by the negative of that number, which is negative 3, times the row with the 1 in it, which is R3, adding it to R2. So those two will become 0 and 0. So let's see what that gives us. Notice the third row doesn't change. We get 0, 0, 1, 2 over 7, 2 over 7, negative 1 over 7. Now, for the first row, negative 3 times this, oh, wait a minute, the 1 and 0 stay, that doesn't change, the 0 and 1 doesn't change, so that stays, it's just the third column that's going to change. So negative 3 times R3 gives me negative 3, added to 3 gives me 0. Negative 3 times this is negative 6 over 7, added to 1, that's 7 over 7, that's minus 1 over 7. So let's do that again. Negative 3 times this gives me negative 6 over 7. Add that to 1, which is plus 7 over 7, which is a 1 over 7. Did I do that right? Ooh, good thing that I checked because I did it wrong here. So again, negative 3 times this is negative 6 over 7. Add it to 1, which is 7 over 7. Add it together gives me plus 1 over 7, not negative 1 over 7. So we got to be careful with the fractions. Okay. Here's the same thing, negative 3 times this, added to that, gives me the same result, 1 over 7. And finally, negative 3 times this gives me 3 sevens, added to 0 gives me 3 over 7. So now I got my second row. Third row, negative 3 times this, added to that, gives me 0. Negative 3 times this, added to this, gives me minus 6 over 7. Negative 3 times this, added to 1, gives me... 1 over 7. And negative 3 times this, 3 sevenths added to 0 is 3 sevenths. It's a little messy, but notice we have 1 seven, 1 seven, 3 sevenths, negative 6, 1 and 3, 2 sevenths, 2 sevenths, and negative 1 over 7. Now notice that this here is the A, the A inverse matrix. A inverse is equal to, let me write it down, so I get 1 seventh, 1 seventh, and 3 sevenths. That's a 7. I get negative 6 over 7, 1 over 7, and 3 over 7. Here I get 2 over 7, 2 over 7, and negative 1 over 7. Or I can pull a 1 over 7 out, so this is equal to 1 over 7 times 1, 1, 3, negative 6, 1, 3, 2, 2, negative 1. And that's probably a cleaner way of writing it. All right, so now that we have the inverse matrix of A, A inverse, I can now solve for X, Y, and Z as follows. I can now write that X, Y, and Z is equal to the inverse matrix of A times the B matrix. Now, the B matrix is simply a matrix with the constants negative 1, 1, and negative 7. The A matrix is what I have over here. So this becomes 1 over 7 times 1, 1, 3, negative 6, 1, and 3, 2, 2, and negative 1, multiplied times the B matrix, and the B matrix is negative 1, 1, and negative 7. Okay, so I have to multiply these out and multiply everything by a 1 over 7. So this becomes 1 over 7 times... This row multiplied times this column. 1 times negative 1, which is minus 1. 1 times 1, plus 1. 3 times 7, plus 21. Okay, second row, this column. Negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. 1 times 1, plus 1. 3 times negative 7, minus 21. Next. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. 2 times 1, plus 2. Negative 1 times negative 7, plus 7. So now I have to add these together. So this is equal to 1 over 7 times the 1's cancel out. I get 21. 7 minus 21, which is minus 14. And... Something is not right here. Something is not right. Ooh, I made a mistake. 
Notice, 3 times negative 7 is a negative 21. So the, you've got to be very careful. It's easy to make mistakes. So there, that's a negative 21. So that would be a negative 21 right here. Negative 14. The 2's cancel out, and I end up with a positive 7. Now I can go ahead and multiply those three numbers by 1 over 7. So this becomes equal to negative 21 divided by 7 is negative 3. Negative 14 divided by 7 is negative 2. And 7 divided by 7 is 1. And there are the three values for x, y, and z. So x is equal to negative 3, y is equal to negative 2, and z is equal to 1. And that's how we use what we call the inverse matrix method by taking all the coefficients of the x, y, and z variables on the left side equal sign. On the right side here, the augmentation of this matrix, the augmented matrix is the identity matrix. Then when you convert, convert this into an identity matrix, this turns into the inverse of the matrix A. So this is A, this is the inverse matrix A, if we go to the process. So it's kind of like the reduced row echelon form technique, until we have ones across diagonals, zeros everywhere else, and here we have the inverse matrix A. When we factor out a 1 over 7, we end up with just the numerators everywhere. And then when we take this and multiply times the B matrix, which is, the B matrix is the three constants on the right side of the equal sign, we multiply that together, row times column, row times column, row times column, just like we did here. You don't make mistakes like I did, that's a negative 21. Then multiply everything by 1 over 7, and you get the values for X, Y, and Z. It's really slick, it does take some time, but it works. But do have to be careful of the errors, and that, is how it's done. <laughs> it took me that long to do it. <laughs> You're a mathematician. You should like this. It's still boring. I don't know. It's, it's a great method.